Today we're going to learn how to care for a Christmas cactus. Like how much to water a Christmas cactus, how to deal with pests and diseases. So tips and tricks I'm going to share with you today, you won't necessarily find online or in books. At the end, I'm going to share my favorite liquid fertilizer. So let's get started. Welcome to my kitchen. Great to have you here. Now a Christmas cactus, well forget the whole cactus thing, even though it's in the family, the cactus family, this is essentially a succulent. And Christmas cactus or cacti originate or live in the tropics of South America. And so these plants actually survive in the crooks and branches of trees in, in diffused dappled sunlight and lots of moisture. So first thing to do is get it out of your head that these plants live in the Sahara Desert or in Arizona. Nah, that's the most confusing thing about Christmas cactus I found. So once you understand that, you're on your way to having healthy, beautiful Christmas cactus in your home. Aren't these beautiful, these blossoms? They're just enormous, right? They're, they're as big as my hand. And one thing I wanna show you, and this is, this is really important no matter what you grow, and that is to simply observe the plant. Just observe it. And you'll see there's differences, for example, in these flower blossoms. What a Christmas cactus does in their case is the blossoms in this particular plant, they start out these buds in a, in a horizontal coming out of the tip of the branch, like just like straight out. And then they, they kind of work then a, like a 90 degree angle. And this is the kind of thing that's so important in gardening is to observe your plant. Don't be in a hurry. So this plant, which I absolutely love, and it blooms around uh, November and December for me. That has to do a lot with the amount of sunlight or daylight that comes in the windows here. Like all plants, Christmas cactus are triggered by sunlight or light in general. And that's the energy that drives the engine that allows this plant to grow, photosynthesis and everything. So for us in the winter here in Kodiak, Alaska, our day length at this time of the year dwindles down to about six or seven hours. And that's what triggers the flowering period. So I'll be totally upfront with you. I don't get into this, um, take it outside and then bring it indoors and put it in the closet. And I don't do that. I let my houseplants kind of figure out their own rhythm. Lots of people will say, well, it needs diffuse light, not direct sunlight. But again, in our case, where we have very little sunlight in the winter, I put them right in a south facing window. So figure out what works best for your plants in your environment, in your latitude. So the best conditions for growing a Christmas cactus is when you replicate what their normal environment, their native environment is like. And like we talked about, so it's going to be a good or rich potting soil, dappled sunlight. You want to keep the soil slightly on the damp side. Let it dry out a little bit and you'll know when to water it by poking your finger in here. And when it's starting to dry to the first knuckle, then it's time to water. Don't overwater it though. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. So regular potting soil with a pH, a normal or neutral pH, um, diffuse light, but in my case, like I said, right in a south facing window is just fine. Now 70 to 80 degrees is what you'll often hear for Christmas cactus. Uh, we have a wood stove in our house, so it can get pretty warm, but Christmas cactus, when they're starting to form buds and bloom, they like it a little cooler. And also I will mist it quite a bit. Oftentimes, uh, just take a little sprayer, a mister. So this is the kind of envision. This is the kind of environment they have in the tropics. Um, indoors or outdoors, I just keep mine indoors. If I take my plants outdoors, then I run the risk of um, bringing in uh, pests 
Um, it's just too windy here, and I know this this poor plant would get thrashed. So I just keep mine indoors all year. And sometimes it'll bloom twice a year. Now you'll see this is a terracotta pot, and uh, it's got white here, and a lot of that is caused by salts or minerals in the water. Make sure the pot that you use, whether it's plastic or terracotta, has good drainage holes. Uh, some people will put them on a tray of pebbles to keep the humidity higher. I don't think that really works, to be honest with you. One thing to remember too is even though it's a cactus and it's got little spikes on it, they're not gonna hurt you. So go ahead and touch your plant. Say hi to it, talk to it, tell your plant that it's beautiful. Every creature like to know, likes to know that it's, it's, it's a lovely, beautiful thing. A lot of people, I think, are afraid to touch their plants overall. And when you walk by a plant, be it a fern or a Christmas cactus, just, just touch it. Say hi. Use your tactile senses to kind of get acquainted with it. Um, even feel the flowers as the buds. And when they're opening up like this, you see? Another way that I really enjoy observing my plants, and this is helpful because it also enables me to look for pests, is I will use a 10X loop. This is a jeweler's loop or a geologist's loop. So I just bring it up to my nose like this, and it's absolutely phenomenal what you can see close up. Like I said, this is a 10X loop, so magnification is 10 times. It's just beautiful. I mean, just this little pink tip right here looks like velvet. It's absolutely stunning. So I have several of these with me at all times. When I'm out in the garden, I have them in the greenhouse. I keep them close to my house plants. I can find pests and diseases much more quickly, and it helps me identify them. So speaking of pests and diseases, what you might find with a Christmas cactus is you might get what's called a blossom drop. The buds will just drop off. And I have found that's caused by like too cold or drafty conditions, sudden changes in temperature. And it doesn't mean the death of the plant. It's okay, but it's just telling you that something is not quite right. This plant in particular, which is one of my favorites just because it's so big, the blossoms are so big, this spring, these uh, branches were turning red, like purple red, and they were shriveling. And I had to find out what was wrong. Well, it turns out that it was suffering from root rot. I had planted it in soil that had too much organic material in it. In other words, it was just too dense a soil. And so I lifted it out of the soil and I rinsed off the roots and I could tell that it was suffering from root rot because some of the roots were brown and just a few of them were white and healthy. And then I just transplanted it in just regular potting soil. N no additives, no fertilizers, no chemical fertilizers added to the soil, just basic potting soil. And look, it's just now back and flourishing and looking absolutely beautiful. Now, as far as pests go, pests like uh, mealybugs and um, aphids, spider mites, fungus gnats. Now I've never had any problem with mealybugs or spider mites or even aphids on my Christmas cactus. However, <laughs> I do have some problems with um, fungus gnats. Mm. And just to prove it to you, here is a yellow sticky trap and it's just covered with fungus gnats. And that's back to when I had uh, too much organic material in my soil, and it was just too damp, too long, and that's how it got the root rot too. So pretty extraordinary. You don't want to show this if you're having somebody over for dinner, right? But let me show you uh, a little thing about fungus gnats and how to deal with them. And what I do is I buy these um, yellow sticky traps, and I buy them in bulk, and what I do is See, it's covered with like a, like a wax paper on either side so you're not getting stuck to it. And then I just cut them to size for what works for me. Now, some of these packages, actually a lot of them, come with 
sticks or wires and you can supposedly put them in the soil or like hang them off of branches. I don't bother with these and I'll show you what I mean. So what I do is I cut my own size and what works pretty well is about a third, like maybe three by two inches like this. And I'll show you how I peel off the wax paper so that I don't get it stuck on my fingers. So I start with uh, just one side and I hold it on the edges like this and I just peel off one size and then I just rotate it around, hanging on to it, gripping it by the edges, and then I peel off as best I can. Okay, here we go. The other side, okay? Then what you wanna do is just place it on the soil. Just place it on the soil like this and lean it up against one of the branches because fungus gnats will crawl around the soil along the top rim of a pot and they'll crawl along the stems of the plant. So that kind of gets it in all, in all places, right? Now here's my favorite water soluble fertilizer. Now, first of all, you wanna fertilize your Christmas cactus during the, the main growth period which is usually around April until September, October-ish. And, the, and then hold back, you wanna hold back on the fertilizer as it starts to bloom. But here's my favorite fertilizer. Now I don't wanna freak you out here, you ready? It's urine, okay? Now don't, don't get squeamish on me because <laughs> urine is one of the best household fertilizers with tons of nutrients and minerals and lots of nitrogen. It's a fertilizer that I think um, too many generations have forgotten, but at one time, this was the fertilizer. So what I do is I take a watering container like this and I dilute it about, you know, give or take, one part to five or one to 10. And I just pour it in like this so maybe, I'm just guessing, so maybe like a two quart container, I might add like a half a cup and that's it. And then I just water the plant and I'm thinking as I water my plants, not what's for dinner or anything like that, I just say, hey, I'm watering you with loving water and I really appreciate what you're doing. You're a beautiful plant. Thank you very much. That's how you create a connection with your plants is to engage with them, talk to them, like I said, and just basically love them. All right, the bottom line, remember finally, is don't treat a Christmas cactus like your run-of-the-mill cactus that you'd find in the desert, right? Water regularly, but not too much. Talk to your plants, love them, and they'll love you back. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments about your Christmas cactus, just pop it in the description below. I answer all questions as quickly as possible. So meanwhile, have a great rest of your week. Cheers.